from Plant Lab in it's Austin, Austin, Texas. Texas. This is Stacker News Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Stacker News Live. My name is Carm with my BF. Uh, are we? We're friends, right? I'm a plant poet. I'm sad that you asked me that. I feel like we so are I friends. I won't even answer. We're, we're not. We're not best friends forever. Not yet, right? But we're we're like friends. We're like we're like this. All right. So whatever that is. Yep. I'm not a. You've never done that with a person before, ever, huh? You know, back in the hood, you, you know, don't, when I was you growing don't even up. Know how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't growing up in the hood. Anyways, uh, how's your uh, how's your week, Jenna? My week's been really good, but I've been really. Um, I got. I feel like I'm getting a little sick, and I've been a little. Oh no! Just recovering from all of the fun and wild times that were had. Yeah, it seems like everybody's week. recovering this week. It's a recovery week. What do you think so too? No, I've just been killing it this week. Oh, so. of course, of course. I'm just going nonstop. That's just who you are. No, I did feel like that on Monday, but you just gotta suck it up. You yeah. suck it up and you go back to work. You know what I've been doing? I've been I've like been Topher drinking. over there, like. Pleb Deb over there, yeah, they no, just sucked it up and just like, we're going back to work. I've been, I've been taking a tea, a tablespoon every day of elderberry syrup, apple cider vinegar, and raw honey. What does that do? I don't know, but it's good. I was in an Uber to this morning and the guy was saying, you need to take some zoo poo. Zoo poo. <laughs> he was like, you look like a big guy. You need to get some of the zoo poo out of you. I was like, really? <laughs> So it's a thing. It's like apparently it's a thing that you buy on Amazon and it cleans out your colon and everything. Oh, okay. I think he was helping me out. I okay. had no idea. You know Somebody, what? if a stagger is listening, look at home and you know what? see if there's zoo poo. He said, yeah. the, he said the problem is that you have to spend two days because all you're doing is pooping. Wow. For two days straight. So you got to take off. A you got to take days. off a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I thought the stackers would love that story. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, let's talk about your top story. I know you had. Well, we not, love to talk about poop, so I'm not, glad we not, got that not exactly poop, but love projects. Women aren't Trump. My reactions to Bitcoin Nashville. Oh, this yeah. is from Pleb Poet Bitcoin Territory, July thirty first. Ten comments, yeah. three thousand four seventy two cents. You what know, there's a lot of good top posts this week. Um, this one was one of them. So thank you, guys and girls. Uh, yeah, I was just talking about like what I, what I came away with from the conference because I wrote earlier about like what I expected. So I just wanted to like follow up mm. and be like, this is what happened. Um, but basically my, my biggest point was just like, I was surprised and delighted to find that I felt so much love At and the conference? really love, like really honestly, just like, oh, love. Wow. I was very overwhelmed by that. I'm measuring love in, okay, I'm kind of talking about it. Like there's like joy ar around. There's like people are very joyful and joyous to be there and to be present. And there's encouragement and support just like felt about like the things we're talking about. And there's genuine interest in like what people are doing because everyone's doing something interesting, it feels like. And so everyone just has genuine interest because of that as like as a result of things that we're doing. And that was something I quoted this. This was something G said to me. What do you say? When we were, uh, G is the rooftop. one who runs San Antonio Bitcoin uh -huh, club. San Antonio, uh, and Alamo labs, that Alamo G labs, that G straight show. He was talking to me and Austin. Uh, we were, we were at a bar and he was, he was preaching to us a little bit. I never got to mm. see the side of him, but it was great. Was and his woman was, around though? She was, that's probably why. Yeah. Um, but he was just saying, like, what's different about us Bitcoiners is that we're all following our dreams and like doing what we love and like trying to see mm. the things that we want come about um, and like actually working to to like bring about. What do you we feel want. like we're doing that? Yeah, dude. I feel like I'm doing that. I mean, I feel like Stacker News is like the reason that that I feel like I'm doing what I want. Do you and feel like I you're love. doing it just for this town, this city, or do you feel like you're doing it for Bitcoin? Because I definitely feel mm. like I'm doing it more for this town. Hmm. Then I am doing it for Bitcoin, if that makes any sense. Well, you know, it's really hard. It's really hard to like, like Bitcoin is such a big thing. It's hard to like compare yourself to it yeah. or like measure yourself to it. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's better to have a town and a community as like proxy. Cause that actually is something that real sense. that you can uh, measure. Right. Yeah. That, that sounds about right. But yeah, this post was just about like, yeah, so I was talking about love. I was talking about the projects I heard from. And so these I are all the ones said, that you heard from right here? Yeah. 
it was just a lot. I just wanted to list them out and maybe I'll go like kind of into more detail on the things that I was yeah. really interested in myself. But. What, what did you find interesting in, in some of these? That, that well, out? I got, I got to see the dirty coin uh, documentary mm. and I guess that was just, it seemed like it was just made by this one person, this one chick, like, um, like her, it was just like her brainchild, but obviously like she must've had a team. I don't know. It like, it was very expansive. It like went into all these different like little stories of like, how mining happens all over the world and why and what it actually is. And I thought it was really great. Wow. That's so cool. This really is well what done. the movie was. I remember yeah. we all talking about it, but I didn't know. Yeah. So they premiered that that's so uh, cool. during the, during the conference. Anything else that stuck out? What'd you think about Bitcoin park? Oh, I did love Bitcoin park. Now, like this was a, this was kind of an interesting time to visit Bitcoin park because it was busy. There was a lot of people coming through, some big people coming through, like Jack Mollins was there. Will Reeves was there talking about the fold. Was Sailor there? I didn't see him, but he mm. probably was at some point. I was just there one day. He probably day. parked his, his yacht right behind Bitcoin park. Yeah. There were, <laughs> there were a lot of, <laughs> there were a lot of Teslas. Woo, doggy. Um, but I thought Bitcoin park was amazing. Um, I got to meet Kim and Josh oh, and yeah. uh, they gave me a the little best. tour of the place. The best people ever. They have really, a lot they of really great, are. You know, what's great about Bitcoin park. They have yeah. a great collection of art. I was very impressed by that. That's what money can buy. Jenna. Yeah, really good true. art. It's true. But my art's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of the, uh, the makerspace, the hackathon, all that kind of stuff? The hackathon was cool. Um, I was going to include a few other projects. I just couldn't find their links. So I'll, I'll work on that. But, um, what'd you think of El Tor? I mean, good I or bad for Bitcoin? I don't know what to think about. I don't good know. Good or bad for Monero, I guess I should say. Um, I think the person that's making El Tor is having a great time. And I think that's great. Yeah. There's a lot of trolling going on. Cool. Uh, and that's then I amazing. Was talking about, I was talking about, I went to an art museum. I don't know if I got to tell you about yeah, that. Yeah, you did tell me. You like, okay, you yeah. came up to me and like, no, car, did I you go to, to. Yeah. yeah, you like, car, did you go to the art museum? I was like, yeah, I went the last time with Tristan, but. Yeah, it was. God, if you would have told me you would have went, I totally would have went with you. Uh, I totally would have went have, with you. Yeah, yeah. it's it, amazing, right? It's a good spot. The um, that gift shop they have, dude, is mm -hmm. like. I almost spent some like all the stuff that there. we have, like all that stuff that I have over there. It's oh, it's from that gift yeah, shop. It's a great one. Well, in the building itself, did you like how Art Deco it was? Yeah, they have a lot of money. It's pretty dark. Well, it's yeah. a it's an old post office. Oh, is it? That's what I learned. Yeah, I it's didn't a very know old post office re reinvented as an artist. So who was Alexander McQueen? Okay, Alexander McQueen is a designer. He unfortunately committed suicide in 2010, which was a wow. which was something uh that wasn't necessarily featured in the exhibit, but it was like a story that you went on of his life. And uh Wow, really? What did what was I think that I think Alexander McQueen is an example of like Someone who shines very brightly only for a short period of time. Gosh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he just like invented some like insane techniques for creating fashion that like no one had thought about before. So they had all this there? Like yeah. The like I got to see it and I never thought I would see anything like that. And it was awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. So you should have gone. It was a great time. Yeah, I will next time. I'm sure yeah. they'll do the next conference. Yep. Somewhere there. That's awesome. What did you think of the whole, I don't know if you want to get political, okay. but what did you think? <laughs> what did you think of the whole Trump stuff? Yeah, I, I was excited about it. I mean, it, it, it gave like a very big buzz to the whole event. I mean, I'm sure there already was, I haven't been one where Trump hasn't been there, but <laughs> yeah. do you think it was a miss for Kamala? Pa not Pamela. It's no, Kamala. I'm glad she, I, I don't do you think she would have went? Says. She fell out of a coconut tree or something. You know, you know that. I don't know. I, you don't know that. Movie. I think there, I think there's, I think, I think this, it was clearly obvious to me and I'm not going to say who it was clearly obvious to me that at the conference, you found out who the liberal Bitcoiners were oh. and who the right wing Bitcoiners were. And, yeah. then, and then the Bitcoiners that didn't give a care. Yeah. Either I, way. I feel like I and ran then, into most yeah. people that didn't care. That's what I, I felt like that was, everyone was just kind of like, whatever. And it, bit, and it was kind of like, there was a little bit of like the tension of like, but you could Bitcoin see that you could literally see it. Like they're beaming their vote right from their face. Like it was kind of, yeah, there was a lot of fans. There was definitely a lot of fans. Yeah. But that's fun. I mean, I love when people love things. But it's weird too. Like I was, maybe Keon can speak more. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder if it's because some of these Bitcoiners benefit from having that yeah. person in office one way or oh, another. Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably. Yeah. Right. Totally. Especially if he's going to do the things he's talking about. I mean, but maybe the fact that Biden's leaving doesn't 
benefit the liberal Bitcoiners right now. But who knows what's going on on that side of the camp? I don't know. I don't know. I can't pretend to know. I, I don't just... know, but I, I, I have some I have some idea. Well, I'd love to hear it. Maybe you should get into it. Keanu, if it hits, a top, if it hits a top too. five, I'll talk about it. All right. I think it is. Maybe not. But yeah, you got you got some of my thoughts there. So that's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing this. Yes. I appreciate you. Um, did you uh, do an interview? Because oh. Cyber News Live, you're asking people to. I may, I may, get, I may uh, get connected with um, Joe Martin, the musician. I want to. Oh, that'd be cool. So yeah, we'll. we'll get what did you think up. of that whole Zebedee that was builder so battle I'm stuff? I'm so glad that happened. Yeah, it was really great to hear from those people, the musicians. Joe I know, Martin, right? They feel loud, like they don't get a talk. Sarah Jade, yeah. They, I mean, it was just obvious that they're like very um, sure of themselves and what they're doing, and just like want to share, yeah. share like basically that's love. I think that's love that's coming out of them that they're pouring out. And that's yeah, awesome. I think Joe is uh, he's a hardcore Bitcoiner. Mm. Like I've had him on the pod, and he's mm -hmm. he's very orange pilled. Yeah, I would love to talk to him more. Yeah. So uh, I think we'll try to get that set up. We had Siggy with the top comment. He said, "Great write up. I have never been to a major conference, and I almost made it this year." In the end, I couldn't swing it, but maybe BTC Prague next year. Oh, that's too bad, Siggy. Yeah. I don't know um, if I'll ever meet Siggy, but that'd be crazy if so. Yeah, there you go. Pleb Poet. Appreciate Zapper. All. Zapper. All right. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Coob. Are you around here somewhere? Oh, he's hiding back there. Um. So that was the second top story? That was or the second the, one. That was the second one. Okay, so we're going to yeah. jump in. If you've never seen this crazy show before, it's called Stacker News Live. Um, we that? cover the front front page of Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and uh, at stacker.news. Um, and uh, this, I don't watch. I don't read the news. I don't pay attention to it. But Keon yeah. does. Car is uh, uh, Turns out a lot of people were surprised. They're like, Car, you actually don't read that? I'm like, no, I'm too busy. Too busy grinding it out, Coop. I'm grinding it out. It's too busy just scheduling like, meetings. Just like the OGs tell you to do it. Just grind it out, Lots Car. Just grind it out. You just got to grind it out, Coop. Should we get Should we get through this podcast if you schedule the meeting? You got to grind, you gotta grind it out. You got to grind out podcasts. <laughs> the time, the time for this podcast. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to jump into the top story. The first top story is reflections on industry, industrial mining after my first larger conference. This is uh, Bitcoin Territory, July 31st. Jason B., 22 comments, 13,000 cents. Keon, what is this? So this is Jason B, who I heard was at the conference from uh, Pleb Dev, who Ooh. said that he ran into him at an event, and Jason B had taken Pleb Dev's courses. So, wow. Uh, and he got a job at Mempool? I don't think he did. I don't think that's what oh, this wow. is about. But he did, he started, he ships these projects, and I think, I think I, if I recall correctly, he... That's He's been amazing. hired recently as an as a as an engineer. It might not be the case, but maybe it was someone else. Remember. Anyway, this post specifically is about uh, talk, getting minor sentiment about mining pool centralization. He said he it, he personally mines, and so he went and asked a lot because there was a most of the the booths and like the the like sales area that are that was dedicated at this conference was oriented towards. Miners and mining pools, so immersion mining equipment, other types of mining equipment, um, pools, whatever. They were all there kind of promoting themselves. And so he got he had the opportunity to talk to a lot of them and ask them about mining pool centralization and whether they care or whatever. And he said the generally it seemed like they didn't even really think about it um, and it didn't seem to matter to them at all, which concerns him and concerns most Bitcoiners who you know, care about Bitcoin's mission rather than, you know, the kind of play to get more Bitcoin and um, get richer or whatever. And so uh, that, that concerned him. And he kind of opened, he kind of shared his point of view. I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. It was really good. Um, I think it's a wake up call for a lot of people that the majority of miners, the people who have most of the money and are actually doing a lot of the work in Bitcoin are not really uh, paying a lot of attention to Bitcoin's mission and what it's trying to do as much as they are trying to gain, trying to gain this asset, you know, for, you know, with mostly fiat gains, I assume if they, they're not super concerned about the censorship properties. Um, yeah, I don't think people realize there's more fiat Bitcoiners than ever this cycle. That's not a bad thing. It's just incentives are at play. So 
they usually don't align with um, mission focused, I guess. The one hopeful thing because. about this post is that he, he, he thinks it's mostly a lack of education. It's not so, maybe it's not so much that they aren't, they don't care or they, they don't, they, they know about it and they don't want to, you know, switch to stratum V2 or whatever. He said it's primarily that it just feels like they're kind of out of the loop. They're like loop is different. They're in a different hmm. loop. So they're out of our loop. And he said, you know, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's an opportunity for him to educate some of the miners. He says he mines at home and yeah, yeah it sounds like a good. It's interesting. I didn't get a chance to talk to Austin from Sonoda, but I wanted to. Um, and that's, that's somebody I wanted to talk to. It kind of sucks, but he's always been my guy to find out what's going on in the mining stuff. Um, I will say like, and I said this earlier this year when we recorded one in Nashville when they were doing the mining summit. It's just a dude, it's a totally different rabbit hole. That whole that whole segment. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, it's wild when multiple when people understand different parts of Bitcoin. Yeah, parts of Bitcoin. I feel like the mining one is just a totally different class. What do you feel like your your niche in Bitcoin is? Me personally? Yeah. It's stuff I do at Plub Lab. It's like all the founder builder stuff. Founder builder niche. That's a good niche. But even that's it goes deep too if you really want to go down it. Yeah, they're like niches and the niches. Yeah. So it's um I don't know. What do you feel like your niche is? At this um, point it's wallets, right? Non custodial wallets. <laughs> I mean, I'm certainly <laughs> spending a crap ton of time on it. Uh my niche would probably be I think probably more buildery foundry stuff. Uh I mean, yeah. I pay. A, I like. A, I like commons. I like com. I like yeah. uh, novel incentives. I feel like problems. you like the gaming stuff too. The gaming mechanics of. Uh, I like that zapping. stuff. Too. If I had a, if I had a, if I had a niche, that would be my niche. But I don't even consider myself an expert at that. It's more like I have. Uh, I can build things, and I'm I'm interested in that thing, and like you know, like Kamala Harris says, like the. the Kamala Kamala Harris. Kamala, I'm sorry. Was that Is racist? Kamala. Uh, the Venn diagram, I, you know, I have like three intersecting Venn diagrams that bring me to where. Interesting. That bring me to Sacker News. We had Durock Delta with the top comment. It says, mining is an industry for people who literally have no ideas. Wow. It is an industry where the product to be delivered in its quantity is preordained for eternity. Wow. It is more basic than the business of logging or mining for talc. Is it talc powder? Yeah, I don't know what talc powder is. That feels it is, like something they used in the 1930s. It is no more interesting than janitorial or waste management services, yet it is able to draw a frenzy from... Okay, yeah, it's kind of long. Very poetic. Do you think he has any... Do you th I don't know. It's kind of... I think they have... I no think they ideas. Have a, I think they have ideas. I think... But it is, it is a relative... It's a blue-collar thing. Yes. It's relatively industrial. Like, I think it's relatively... Uh, mechanical. It's relatively tangible, physical. And I think that's why those people tend to be more grounded um, and like more sensible than totally. Yeah. And that's, you know, but also, but also that maybe keep prevents them from seeing some of these more abstract concerns um, with regard to centralization of mining pools. Cool. Yeah. It was a great post. Great post. Jump into the next one. The next one is a plow. Oh, no, that wasn't it. The uh, protest in Venezuela. This is the third top story. Protest in Venezuela after electoral fraud. This is from B57, July 29th. News territory. 108 comments. 12,300 sats. Keon, what's going on in Venezuela? I'm going to go grab beer. You want another one? Uh, I think there might be one left, but you can have it. If there's, one, if there's another one, I'll take one. Um, oh, good. Uh, so I don't know how you pronounce his uh, name, but it's B BF57 uh, has been covering uh, Venezuela and has been covering the uh, the election in Venezuela or the, the fraudulent election in Venezuela and the protest that follows. I highly recommend going to their profile and uh, looking at all their recent posts because they've been doing a day by day accounting of everything that's going on in the country. Um, with tons of links to external uh, accounts on X and uh, where a lot of this protest stuff ends up happening. Um, but they're bringing a lot of it to Stacker News and resharing it on Stacker News and, and uh, kind of... Oh, Venezuelans are? Uh, beef is Oh, Venezuela. interesting. Yeah. 
Um, wow. Have, so have, this is like a place where they can come talk about what's going on. We have quite a few Venezuelans. I'm kind of I'm one Venezuelan that we frequently have just post photography. Uh, I think his, his name is Malos uh, mm-hmm. 10, I believe. Or his name is Malos 10. And they, they have been absent while this has been happening. They usually post every day, like a photography collection. Um, so I hope they're doing okay. Maybe they're just out there, you know, getting a lot of photographs. But anyway, they're, um, you know, most of the globe recognizes this uh, election as fraudulent. The Venezuelan people know it's fraudulent um, and they are protesting it. So what happened? This dude on the left said he won. This has been the, you know, and this the, dude on the right said he also won. But the numbers don't add up. Is that what's going on? Well, so the guy in left is Maduro. He's currently in power. He's been in power for years and widely recognized as a dictator. But uh, but mm. he he staged. I, I believe in the pa- I believe in the past he staged elections, and this is yet another one. But the the conditions in the country have gotten so bad. I think people are not okay with a staged election. So have they gone and removed him? Because you can do that as citizens. Uh, they you, haven't done it yet. Well, you can do that with significant costs to the opposition in terms of, you know, death uh, and violence. And so I think I that's think, what it takes if you want to live uh, a free life. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Civil war. Um, uh, that's not, is that civil war? I feel like that's just yeah, like. Yeah, that's civil war. Nah, that's not civil war. That is civil war. That's I is that the that, definition of civil war? I believe that's the nature of most civil wars. Where there is where is, you try to remove the person that says he won but didn't win. I believe that's how a lot of it happens. Is like uh, we don't respect this rule, this ruler. Uh, and hey, we're at the time to do there it. There are some people that do, and you are against them. Anyway, Maduro had. Did they do it though? Did they do that? They're in the process of protesting it. So this oh. is what he's been reporting on every day. He posts about two, sometimes two or three posts a day. Kind of recapping everything that's happened, all of the protests. Are they events, sure this things. other guy won, though? Yes, they are. How sure, though? Uh, very sure. Like, okay. uh, basically, all other, uh, lots of other South American countries have recognized it as a fraudulent. There's a lot of yellow in there. What does that mean? <laughs> stack grenades? I was just kidding. Oh, I don't think those are stack grenades. Oh, those are just Venezuelan colors? Yeah, those look like MAGA hats. Dude, that looks like me. a party, bro. It doesn't even look like a riot. Or civil war. Oh uh, well, this is this is a picture of the of Maduro supporters celebrating, which uh, is likely just his administration about celebrating his fake win. Oh, that's his logo. That's his logo. Oh, interesting. So this is, these are these are kind of sites uh, uh, Gano, after Gano, he Pinto. claimed the election in his favor. I won something. But Venezuela has had yeah. some of the worst. Inflation, worst economic conditions. This guy commented on it too. Yeah, everyone, everyone in you know other South American leaders are like, this is, this is obviously like a lot. Panama, I believe Peru, they all stopped. They're like, we're no longer do. We don't recognize Maduro as the leader. This is a fraudulent election. And Malay is also commenting on it. Malay, too. who, yeah, who's, wow, this is getting heated. It's very heated. The more I scroll down it's this post, the more I realize. I mean, this, these, are, these people are really, you know, before this election, they were already suffering a lot. But no one's died yet, right? It's From, still. No, they are. There's tons of people dying. And Maduro right is now? killing them. Yes. Oh, whoa. You didn't tell me that part. Well, dude, what do you think every nation is like the United States? This, this oh, place. This so is one they're of the wor- shooting people or they're, what are they doing? Because yeah. they're disobeying? Yes. What, dude? Wow. Dang, is this and this is the this is the post that's mostly where all this information is on Soccer News right now. Where is all the information going? I guess it's going to Twitter. A lot of it's on oh. X as the as it's a kind of a more real time medium. But yeah, when you don't get on Twitter, man, you really are checked out of everything, huh? At least this kind of news cycle, like, like the you know the the lots the the individual uh, person news cycle, Gosh. where it's not yet compressed. Definitely happens. It's sad there. that people are dying, though. Oh, Bukele talked about it too. Yeah, who you know might be uh, more of a dictator than most people imagined him to be. Gosh, Dad. But are these are all the tweets, I guess. Yeah, lots of tweets. You can kind of, but it's been. Gosh. This is maybe the. This is the first 
or I think the second of a series of like 10 posts and there'll likely be more covering. Yes. I mean, no. I, do you I'm, think, did anybody see this coming? I don't feel like anybody talked about Venezuela at the conference, right? Uh, or did there's, they? I mean, we, again, we, we, several stacker stackers are Venezuelan. Um, and so Bitcoin is already a thing there because they have some of the worst inflation in the world. Uh, but has anybody talked, did anybody talk about this at Bitcoin conference though? The Venezuela stuff? They might've mentioned it on stage in some, in some panel mm. about Latin America, but it wasn't the, no one dedicated, they didn't dedicate a talk yeah. to it or anything. I mean, you have Trump speaking. Wow, dude. We got the top comment from, um, Oliver Weiss, he says, what do you think will happen next? And then we have B57 says, I'm uncertain. There have been protests before, but this time everything is different. For example, before the protests were held at the call of the political leader of the opposition, but this time it was innate. It was a union of the population. People are no longer divided in two. It's been difficult to overthrow them because all the entities with war equipment and weapons are with the dictators. They do not defend the people, which is their duty. They defend their politicians. They are the blank traitors yeah there so uh before in pri in prior elections i guess maduro actually had real supporters i think they're called chavists um yeah. and uh but more recently said he's basically indicating that that is that is completely eroded that support from maduro they now recognize it as yeah. bad for even you know even the yeah. criminals don't want him in power anymore um, it's terrible news to hear yeah and so uh well, that's, I mean, it's good. It sounds like, it sounds like the, at least the country is united. Against what would you him, do in that situation? If you're, you're Venezuelan and you're in there right now, also I a stacker. I couldn't even imagine. I would pro I would either, I would, if I weren't already, if I'm a, as an American, I would flee uh, anywhere where I felt was bad. Uh, but uh, if I were Venezuelan, I'd probably be like on the front lines throwing Molotov cocktails. That's probably, that's, uh, uh. And I'd probably be dead already because uh, I don't know. Gosh. How about you? What would you do? Oh, you don't want to know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Film in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, I think, I, I think, uh, I mean, it depends. I don't think I could imagine. And obviously you won't know until you get into that situation, right? It's kind of like somebody has a gun at you. What are you going to do? Right. It's like, it's, you don't, it's either fight or flight and you, you really won't know until that kind of happens. But um, I don't know. There's there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's there's different ways to handle this stuff, right? You can you can do it the political way, which it seems like they've tried for a decade at this point, or you can do it dictators. with um, with fight, and that's another option. Or you can escape. That's another option. But to me, I, like the women and children, like that's like, you know, that's it's not fair to those people. Like, you know, the, the men are, men are used to dying, right? Like we're used to dying for centuries That's our now. Role, we're, to die. we're supposed to die. So I think first thing I would, I think I would imagine is like take care of women, children first. And then from there, figure out how to, you know, or take the country back. But that's probably what I would do, but who knows? I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know what to do, but it, it's, I'm, I'm really thankful for, Beef's uh, coverage of it, I'd probably be somewhat disconnected from it. it might, yeah, thanks, you know, Beef. Twitter's algorithm might not even show it to me because I'm not there. Zap them. Zap, zap, zap. Zap them. It's wild, man. It's wild. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's Look at this. This is... Gosh. Yeah, we have our own... I mean, the this, this is kind of what things began to look like at the, you know, in a very gross period for a country. That's why, like we were just talking about the top of the show, but that's why it's so important, like to take care of your backyard. Like literally, like there's like, I, I've been saying this for two years at this point, three, four years. Like there's no time anymore. The time is now. Like you have to start either protecting yourself and protecting your family and the people that you love or join the fight and like, let's try to move this thing in a different direction. And I think we're doing that here in Austin collectively, but, um, you know, I think there's other places in America that they're not doing it or maybe they are, but they're not taking it seriously. And whenever I see stuff like this, it just, just makes me look at the buzzer that's behind me. That's counting down. 
Is this will happen. How much time is on the clock? How much time? I don't know, but it's it's happening, and it's getting closer too, because it's this kind of the stuff that you would see like in other parts of the world, but now it's in Latin America, so it's it's moving closer to home. Anyways, it's only going to get worse this decade. I think by the time we get to the twenty thirties, we'll be fine. But you should you should expect. I think you should expect just try to make it out alive this decade. That would be my advice. Try to make it out alive. That's great advice. <laughs> it's true, though. No, no it's good. I mean, it's, it's like, you know. We're literally living die. through like a depression, recession globally. And, and if you're thriving right now, more power to you. You're doing amazing. But like if you're not, that's the norm. That's the norm. There's something to be ashamed of. Um, do you have anything else you want to talk about this? No. Okay. <laughs> well, if you're out there, stackers, if you're listening in Venezuela, I'm going to pray for you tonight. I didn't know this was going on. Stay safe. Please. Stay safe. Um, yeah, report back to Stacker News. Don't drop it on uh, Elon. He'll just bury it. Or not. Just do both. No, don't do both. Just do oh. Stacker News. Oh, okay. Or Noster. The next top story is new website for tracking RoboSat stats. This is a Bitcoin territory, July 30th. Super Tiesnia, 33 comments, 3,674 sats. What's this? So I, RoboSats, they switched to a federated model, said that they were a little more resistant to getting shut down. Uh, but as a result of that, they stopped displaying their like aggregate statistics about uh, the volumes and stuff that they did uh hmm. yeah so yeah they haven't updated it since uh 2023 maybe they're just busy no i think it's because they switched to a federated model they oh. don't want to do this this like global aggregation but super went ahead and wrote uh a page that does it and they've done impressive levels of volume it shows just within the day they've done uh, nearly a Bitcoin in volume. Good for them, dude. But over time, look at 500 Bitcoin. That's good. Uh, in aggregate. I believe. At I least believe somebody's making aggregate. money in this space. I don't know. Some some people do these charts in relative terms and some of them do it in aggregate. I think, uh, but I think. Oh, did they not? Oh, you're saying they didn't want this out there is that what you're saying i don't know what they did. i'm not saying anything about it. i don't know anything about their attention so i wouldn't say anything about it but super you know liked seeing how much volume they've had they've had like millions of dollars in volume go through robo sats but they haven't been displaying it recently well so he made a thing yep he put he had the top comment he said here are some notes on the problems i had to overcome while making it sourcing the data my initial source for data was aforementioned stats sites the one that doesn't update anymore, I started by copying their zero day data and the data from the last day they updated and those data points became my starting data points. More recent data had a few problems. RoboSets uses a federated model. Um, he says, number two, RoboSets is available only via Tor and I usually try to avoid writing things that require me to run a server. Two apps I wrote, I wrote a pair of Python and Node.js apps at once that run once per day. My Node.js app just passes every RoboSets operator. There's IPv6 problem, it seems like. Wrapping up, now that I have a source that publishes the latest RoboSets, it was easy. Made a little web page that uses Nostra to grab all the events. Hmm. So is he saying it's accurate to a degree or? Yeah, he's saying, I think so. I, I think I think he's saying it's mostly mostly accurate. I don't. I don't recall him saying that it wasn't. Do you post your stats for Stacker News or no? Yeah. It's all on our, it's all public on our analytics at the very bottom of the page. So it's normal to do this then? To show no, stats? It's not normal to show internal. Do you know what strikes volume is? Oh. Do you know what gotcha. Swan, what Swan's yeah. customer base is? Gotcha. You know. But they're, they're not, a, they're not a, they're not, they're not, uh, they didn't raise, right? Nope. Sense. I feel like they're just a. Uh, no, I don't think they did. Just a, they're just a project. They just right? make money. They just make money. They That's good. Do, they're just ind independent, bootstrapped. Exchanges make a lot of money. Found a good niche. Um, cool. Or maybe not cool. Maybe more people will jump in now and try to compete. 
Well, competition is good. I don't think they don't want competition. I think that's part of why they went into a federated model is that they want, uh, they want to be more resilient. It seems like m sort of a mission driven project. Yeah. I mean, we've been covering RoboSet since what? Start this podcast. Yeah, 2021. It feels like roughly so, when I got started. I think I've used them once, maybe. Docs. It's okay. It was, Cell long, docs. It was long ago. Out but, of, um, what is that period called? Statute of limitations or something. <laughs> Why does everything have to get so illegal? We live in a legal world, Car. <laughs> oh, man. Do we? Yeah. What's his face? What's his name? Zabo. He has, he got a law degree for a reason before he wrote the Bitcoin software. Yeah. Well, I think they're doing everything fine. Uh, no, but what do I know? Uh, I think they take custody during transactions. I don't, you know, and then you know, they might not. I mean, bit escrow's out there. They could use bit escrow, couldn't they? No, because they do lightning stuff and it's hard to. Oh. Uh, do non-custodial lightning contracts. Mm. There you go. Escrow contracts. It's the best we got, Snackers. It's the best we got. That's why they went into a federated model. Yeah. There you go. I would yeah. say use RoboSets. Yeah, definitely check it out if you would like. It's a beautiful website. I've always thought it was... Whoa, no, wait. Hang on. Where's the... You got to go to Tor. Do they update their website? You can go, I think you might be able to go to. It should just be your uh, robo sets, right? Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Look at that. Look at this. Adding layers to the onion. Winning at game theory. Moving sats at light speed. If this doesn't get you pumped up, I don't know what will. Looking for robot parts. Adding layers to the onion. Okay, now it's just getting stuck. Yeah, I'm Maybe not it sure won't load. It's really loading. Anyways. I think that might. Not be a real instance anymore. Okay. Switch to the federated. federated. Yeah. There you go. Read the blog. Subscribe. Uh, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, very cool. I thought that was neat. Super test net doing super test net things. The last top story is Trump promises Bitcoin Nashville 2024. 55 comments from Kepford, July 27th, Bitcoin territory. This had 2,903 sets. Keon, what did Trump promise us? Well, it's all these things that he lists here. He talks about uh, electricity. I, re I recall that part is, you know, talking about a lot of electricity. And the war on crypto led by Senator Warren? Yeah. And hmm. choke point 2.0, which. He wants to fire Gary Gensler? That's right. Hmm. Keep Bitcoin jobs and choke point two point oh. Wow. Yeah, it's like a Nate Carter be, shout out. That's the only thing he needs to do. It looks like for a lot of things to fix. Keep Bitcoin jobs in America. That's probably. I mean, I think some of this. That's over not gonna. I don't think he can say this. This is more communistic stuff. Com Communism keeps entering our shores. It's, they're they're clearing it out. I mean, it's part of it. Clearing it out. Platform is like somewhat some level. Till we get rid of all the communists inside our government. I don't know if that's going to save Bitcoin jobs. We'll see. We should have a car on communism segment. Dude, I'm getting, I'm getting quoted everywhere about this communist stuff. I'm the only one talking about it. It's not Who true. else talking about communism? Literally every right-wing person who has a microphone is talking about communism. <laughs> people pay attention. Start mentioning communism. People get scared. Like, whoa, whoa, who's communist? Well, anyway, there's, there's Trump, some, is, Trump is, a, is like a populist protectionist. So in sort in his international what else did he policy. Promise? Uh, oh, crypto advisory council. Oh, you want to get hired? Do you want to? No, that's what we were telling Evan last week. Saw that coming. I don't know who. Uh, who would you put on your? Who would you put on your crypto Bitcoin advisory council? Coop? Um, I'd put I'd put Jimmy Song. Wow, you would. Whoa, just, just breaking Jimmy, news. I'd make Jimmy Song the- Jim, You'd put Jimmy on your Bitcoin he, advisory council? He'd be the Bitcoin advisory wow. side. Wow. I can get behind that. And he would just, that's, he would be the, we don't need a who's, council. Who's a, who, no, 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 there's more than one Bitcoin. person. There's more than one person. Give me three. Okay, so you got Jimmy. Who else would you, who else are you picking? It's hard because I, I think- You got to balance it out. There is no, I don't want to balance though. I just want, I just. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick one. Though. Okay, who would you pick? Who would I pick? Gosh. 
Who's the most honest Bitcoiner I know? There's so many of them. I'm trying to think. Who would I put? Who would Carr put on the Crypto Bitcoin Advisory Council? You should have a podcast called Car Ask Car. You do. What? Uh, who, Car. Who, who, what else is, who, else, who else do? is out there? Who else is out there? There's uh, Law. Is a good, uh, is an else, option who else we got? among the honest class. Um, who's other? Mm. I mean, if you want to balance, if you want to do bipartisan stuff, you could pick someone from resistance money, where they're like a more liberal progressive faction. You I don't know. Shinobi. I don't know who I'd pick. I, I don't know. I don't Lola really Leeds, have a pick. Who does the rage? Mm. See, this is where like when you start picking people, you're like, how does it benefit me? You instinctively start thinking, well, how, how, how will it benefit me if I put somebody on a council? And that's just human stuff, you know? I just mostly want someone who goes in there and says, Bitcoin can be free. And there's no like weird stuff. They're not well, you don't need do... a counselor for that. You just go to Stacker News and follow Darth. You, you pretty much. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I changed my vote to Jimmy Song and Darth. <laughs> it's just Darth Coy, just like F you, F you, F you, F you, take down the state. F you, F you, F you. He's just sending memes to all He's the like, white F this, F gov, this, the, the, and then Jimmy's like, no. And he's like, no, this is blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It could probably be great progress with that, maybe. You know, Lummis would be, but I feel like, I, you know, she she has to be very pragmatic because she actually is in the government. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, someone That's like funny. Jimmy would be like, protect Bitcoin, give I could see Bitcoin that. freedom. And, I could see yeah. that. Order Treasury and other departments and the CBDC plans. Defend the right to self-custody. Oh, wow. He said that. Protect freedom. Create framework for stable coins. You know, half of these. Keep though. 100% of Bitcoin Whatever. government holds. Give me the sentence of rest over. Wow. So he did. Yeah, he did say that. That was rumored, but so he actually did say no, that. No, he said that several times in several speeches to several crowds that would react to it. Cool. I hope he does it. I hope Biden does it. I hope whoever yeah. can do it that, does that's, it. That's, yeah, that should happen. Maybe, maybe uh, Pat, Kamala will uh, will do it here before she leaves. I don't know. Office. We, maybe someone can catch her on her her third uh, her third drink. And what does she drink? Pacifico. Does she drink Pacifico. I think she's I think she's high on benzos most of the time. I have some experience I can see that. with uh, people. We got a non with the top comment. He said uh, he literally said something along the lines of "It makes sense to be nice to you guys at least until the election." This goes to show that he's just rallying. Yeah, it's called lectionary. Discipline said, fingers crossed, the current regime ooh, sells it all just to preemptively spite Trump. Bill Kerr served Trump should have said Bitcoin will be exempt from capital gains tax. Oh, that would have been awesome. And then uh, Gray Ruby says, did I miss something? Who was a special guest? Yeah, there was, there were, before, before Trump came on, there was like at the Bitcoin conference, there was like a panel at that like mining a uh, table thing and they were uh and they were saying that there would be a special guest that was supposed to be elon wasn't it no no one they didn't say who it was and then everybody they said that elon was coming before the conference and then it didn't happen i don't recall that oh maybe it was just happening inside the player pleb bnb might have been the pleb bnb you guys might we were expecting been. elon to show up so he just did it you know yeah you guys were hoping <laughs> no we wouldn't want him there well maybe we would who knows I am Jerry says, I totally agree. Bitcoin doesn't need politicians to survive. They need Bitcoin instead. Bitcoin is not a U.S. thing. It's the world's thing. You think that's true? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think but Catford's point in this post was that uh, it, it's good for Bitcoin that, that politicians feel like they need to uh, court us. They need to yeah. lobby to the Bitcoiners. They need to appeal to the Bitcoiners shows that Bitcoin is gaining in power. Um, like the network is gaining in power and that's great. Yeah, you know? we, had, we had Stephen Cole yesterday at Austin Bitcoin Club and he said the exact same thing, basically. Yeah. That he's like, it's good for Bitcoin that they're actually taking it seriously. And that's bipartisan, you know, that's pro-Bitcoin, that's bipartisan, that doesn't, we don't need to care whether they're Democrat or Republican or yeah. whatever. It, well, all that matters is that Bitcoin is a, is a rising power that is getting respected. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, man. 
Cool. That's all the top stories this week, Stackers. A lot of political stuff, a lot of Nashville Bitcoin stuff, and some poetry. We're going to jump into my favorite segment of the week, Keon's top stories. I don't know this was your favorite segment. What is this? Any tips for next adoption? Yeah, so uh, IVPN is a privacy-focused VPN service. A lot of Bitcoiners use it, but uh, for, I mean, they've been posting on Stacker News for a long time, but they uh, they use BTC Pay to accept Bitcoin payments. They have short-term VPN rentals, which is you know even better for privacy. Um, you know, paid with Bitcoin, but they're a- they're basically asking, you know, what can they do next as a as a Bitcoin merchant serving Bitcoin customers? What maybe how could they level up their Bitcoin game? And so they ha- they list a few things that they're considering. They should start charging. Are they charging yet? Uh, they are charging. Oh, okay. You pay in Bitcoin. Oh. Yeah. I mean, if you pay, if you want to pay in Bitcoin, you can pay in Bitcoin. They're also, uh, you know, they're, they're considering joining a Fediment, doing hourly recurring uh, subscriptions using Bitcoin. Um, there are a few other things like, uh, but they're mostly just asking what, what else uh, they should add in terms of Bitcoin support. And so we have a bunch of people in the, in the, comments give them suggestions which is what they wanted um, here was their first their first kind of entry yeah victor says uh short duration access option you get to throw a vpn tunnel for three hours price and sets, not fiat access to five exit locations multi-hop that's how a lot of people use vpns too it's not like an always on thing for some Whoa. people tony giorgio citing he said interesting would you consider something like hourly daily subscriptions paid over lightning by chance? Something we're looking to build support into Muni. And I think VPN use case could work out with something like this, starting to focus heavily on building subscriptions on lightning. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's one of the things they mentioned in that post. That's because this is an old post, but they're more recent post. They mentioned that subscription idea. They're just, you know, reaching out for more. It's so awesome. Alpha. Yeah, hopefully they'll add some stuff. I think Peter Todd was in the comment section saying he's oh, did a he? user. Um, there are quite a few people who end up using them, but they got a lot of great recs. Um, awesome. He's Proton, so. Oh. Docs. Yeah, but they, they, they're Bitcoiners now, too. <laughs> no, you don't think so? They're going to add crypto so. Wait and see. It's a wait and see, Coop. Oh, you think that someone's gonna just wait and see? Kind of push a button. I'm waiting to see on stuff. I don't. I don't make guesses anymore. When did that happen? I've always been that way. What about with eCash? Still wait and see. Okay. Yeah. Let's wait and see. Yeah, I think the VPN thing is really cool, though. Yeah. I, I might not wait and see for this. I might just go check it out today. Yeah, I think I think it's an awesome option. Yeah, the next story that you had was what is masculinity? Yeah, this is a post by Undisciplined. I thought it was. Uh, he always has like these kind of very. What do you call that? Mm. Meaty, meaty post, right? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Zap them. Zap them. Zap. Them. Uh, uh, anyways, asking what is masculinity had the kind of. Just asked us all what that is. I thought it was a great question. Said it. What do you think it is? It popped up around the Trump. You're the most masculine around. guy I know. Really? Oh, that's great. I'm not very. I don't feel it that way. Uh, but uh, I don't. I I thought about this. I don't know. I feel like I feel like a, a man's role is it's to most, die. I mean, a lot of it. It's it's like we're both the tip of the spear and the shield. It's like that's basically like our role. It's to be on the edge, the periphery of experience to protect more or less to like protect the experience of other human beings. Um, and that's mostly the way I, I see masculinity is like the shell. I definitely saw it different when I was young because, you know, um, I just did being in the arts and stuff like that. You kind of just naturally, you know, that gets attributed with feminine, feminine qualities or whatever. Yeah. But as I get older, I definitely, um, 
I don't know. I feel like if it just naturally comes out now as opposed to before where you had to search for it, if that makes any sense. No, it doesn't. I don't really get it. Cause you said, you, so how did, can you describe what masculine, what, how you thought of masculinity before? Cause you said, how did you I used to how, do it differently? Yeah. I would say like before I really didn't care what people think. And I think now I'm just more cognizant of like my masculine frame, if that makes any sense. Still not entirely understanding what exactly I mean. I can assume. Well, like when you play music and you do like other stuff like that, the arts, that kind of stuff, it, it's a very, it can be perceived as very feminine things. You know, there's like music, there's shared hmm. kind of stuff that you're doing. It's, it's a very, uh, you know, vibe. Kind of dandy. Kind of like a, you know. <laughs> Dandy. Like kind of like a is. dandy. It's kind of like a dandy. Is that a dandy? It's like, like a dandelion. A, well, it's. I think dandy is like a <laughs> sort of feminized. Yeah, there you go. That uh, makes sense. Uh, male. But uh, I think that. I think that. And then, um, yeah, and then just somewhere, somewhere around the somewhere around the way. I think once I got married, it just you started falling more into the masculine frame. So what is it now that you understand? What do I think? I think yeah. I put. I actually commented here. I think I put. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, Gray Ruby said, here are the few traits I think healthy masculinity is. He said, sacrifice putting your family and loved ones well before being your own. Leadership, setting an example for those around you, continuously trying to make yourself better and helping others improve themselves, sharing your knowledge, wisdom, experience with the next generation. Loyalty being someone people can rely on and trust. And I said, yeah, that's what I think it is. Because when I'm in, you know, like at church or even here in, in our collective that we have, it's a lot of this stuff from the men. Some women, but mostly men. How would you, uh, what about, how would you measure masculinity among males, like relative to each other? What would you say? I think, I think the best compliment you can give a man is, you know, it's like um, when they tell you, thank you. And they literally tell you like, it's because of you that changed my life or you've done this for me or whatever. Like that's the best compliment you can give another man, I think. So I think once you hear that a few times, you kind of uh, you kind of realize you're doing it the right way, but I, I think if, I think if you don't hear that, <laughs> then um, then you know what you need to work on. I see. So you need to you need to be validated from other men. I see. Yeah, you yeah. are you are being masculine. You are serving a masculine role even for them on some level. Yeah, and I think also too like it's funny we had a woman on before the, <laughs> the beginning of the show, but I would say like for women you don't need to hear that from them. Does that make does that make sense? Like you don't need to hear that from women. Do you feel like there's as strong a sense of what is masculine uh, as what is what what is feminine as there is what is masculine? I feel like there's a lot more confusion about what is feminine than what than what is masculine. I feel like that, I feel I like think, what is masculine. I think when change. I see it at church, like I think the thing I've noticed at church because I've been going for a while now. I think the thing I see at church is like you see women that are more feminine and are in their femininity, if that makes any sense, mm -hmm. in church or just like in, in that group. Um, but, uh, and then the men are much more masculine in that surrounding, but then you go outside of that and like normal circumstances, you see a lot more women that are more in their masculine, if that makes any sense, than their feminine. And I think that's the biggest difference that I can notice about. I don't know anything. I, it's just kind of what I notice. Pick yeah, up I, just, on. I just feel like there's like, I feel like there'd be a lot more variety of opinions of what is femininity, then there would be a, then there would be in this thread. Like if someone went and asked, what is femininity? And you know, bad place to ask on Stacker News because I feel like we're dominated by men and Bitcoin generally. But if there were a similar venue for women, I feel like there would be a lot more variety of what it means to be feminine. Most of, most of this equates to like uh, die for other people. <laughs> it's like what it is to be a man, sacrifice for other people. Die. No, just die. Yeah, you don't matter. They do. It's like the man. Pretty much. It's like the, the creed of masculinity. Uh, and, but for women, I feel like it's not as, I feel like it's somewhat hotly contested. Uh, it feels like that they're, they're on some level, there is a, an effort to describe femininity as, as masculine, you know, as it, capable of masculinity. I think you're overthinking desirable. it. I think we're switching. Are we switching roles here? Cause I feel like you're overthinking. Cause I'm not though. Yeah. Once, once you, I think for me, at least how I see it is like you, I don't, I don't even, I don't even dare to think what's inside a woman's head anymore. Oh. <laughs> like at all. Like I, 
I won't even waste my time because it's like, what? Like, you don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you just don't know. You do. Not really. There's just a lot of variety. I've, but I think, of, uh, I, th- I don't even think I can answer this question. I don't know what women think. Plot poet, what do you think? No, well, what is femininity? He well, said, do you want to answer fe- this question for people? Have- We're talking about it. Oh, I just, I just came in late. Yeah. Keon wants to know what's inside in a late. woman's mind. And okay. I and I said I don't even okay I would try just, to figure that out in, in in the context of like this post because I read this okay well I would just say like so like femininity what's important to a woman is security and freedom and masculinity is at its best when it complements those things I can see that but there's a lot of ways of being. So that's my answer. <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> well, he wasn't here to hear it, but <laughs> he wasn't here. to. No, I agree. Here. I think you're, I think you're dead on. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks but, for, but thanks I for clearing that up. About what you think about what's in a woman's mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Jenna, I've been through the ringer. I, I don't even think about it anymore. If that makes any sense. Like I can only focus on the things that I, I say this all the time in the lab. Like just focus on what's in front of me. People around yeah. me try to do the best I can and yeah. uh, do all that stuff. And the last thing is trying to figure out what's in a woman's head. You can't hey. do that. Like that's just the can't. It's like it's all about the fruits that somebody um, puts out. It's not about what's in the head. It's about and if you, it's about the fruits of your focus as well. If your focus is producing fruit, it's good focus. There you go. That's amazing. I love that answer. That's that's even biblical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel you. Okay. I feel like we should do that handshake again where it's okay. like this. <laughs> you know what that you know what that is? It's one of these. You sorta of know. Okay. <laughs> it's two beers. Keon, I'm you ready to keep going one. with the show or are you you good? I'm gonna go tap uh Keon back in. Okay, well this turned to car news live. Car. We're gonna jump into the next stop story, you which can just is tell everyone what's inside your head. Oh man. I I'm curious about just, that. Just stress. Stress. Um, the next top story stackers is my fantasy. This is from Siggy 47, Bitcoin territory, 27 comments, 1,163 sats. This was Keon's last post. And I didn't read this, of course, because this is not mine, but it looks like Siggy's talking about, I was listening to Caitlin Long. She predicted that someday a major conventional bank or investment firm would get caught flat footed. And it looks like we have the top stackers. J.W. Woodhouse said it needed to be a non-TBTF bank for the above. This is what happens when a car just takes over the show. It doesn't really go anywhere. Oh, I thought you guys would be talking about femininity law. She answered it like two seconds. No way. She's a woman, turns out. So she knows what's going on in her head. uh, I'll have to review it and figure out what, what women are all about. I have no idea. Uh, What is this story from Siggy? Oh, yeah. He's talking about how, what he was fantasizing about what happened at Trump's rally. Basically, uh, he wants all the Black Rocks and the State Streets and all that oh, cool. to get wrecked. Uh, oh, to get wrecked? Oh, wow. Yeah, he wants funny. Bitcoin to be like more active in its dis- uh, destruction of the traditional financial system. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I don't know how that's going to play out. Should be fun to watch. Or maybe not. Probably yeah. more fun to watch than to live. <laughs> Yeah, we'll live it. So. Hopefully. We don't die. Um, well, it's our role to die. <laughs> and I don't know what the female role is. I wasn't we here for that we part. weren't here for that part. Turns out it's just fruit. Just make fruit. That's all they got to do. Fruit? That's it. They just got to make fruit. Eat, it's fr- biblical, like, bro. It's biblical. Like fruit That's cocktail? Or? Just fruit. We, we're like supposed to die. They're supposed to make salad. fruit. <laughs> Dude, ambrosia salad. Dude, really good. Dude, you know who makes them? I good? know who makes, makes yes. <laughs> I know. It's the first time I ever had it. Okay, we're going to jump into the, um, where is it? The top stackers of the week. We got a hard stop here in 10 minutes. Sorry, stackers. Yeah, Car put the podcast in a kill box today. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> this, this podcast. He wanted us to start even This later. podcast is death proof. Would have been like 30 oh, minutes Oh, whoa. Long. Come here. Oh, you don't want to be on. He's too shy. Oh. Cool, we have well, some mezcal. What is this called? Oh, it's tequila today. 
Cheers. Cheers. What are we celebrating? Yo Packy. Oh, Yo Packy. To Yo Packy. Woo, doggy, that's smooth. Oh, that's very good. That's very smooth. It's very smoky. They must I didn't know I was going to drink tequila today. today. Thank you to the Yo Packy team. Don't your people drink your tequila every Yeah, day? I can drink this all night and not, and not fall over. Really? Yeah. Is that, the, is that the superpower? It's in our blood. That should be like a Marvel superhero. Well, some people can drink whiskey and not tilt over. It's true. Oh, I'll tilt over. Uh, <laughs> so you got Undiscipline, you, Xerox Bitcoiner, Grey Ruby, all that kind of stuff. And then we got the, not the most boring segment in Bitcoin, turns out. Because I said that at last week's live show and everybody was like, no, they already attacked me. Yeah, they did. Would See? you have stopped me? Would you have stopped them Stop. for attacking me? Stop them. Oh, you mean if they like charge the stage? Yeah, they're I like, it's not the most. beat you up a little bit. You know, Gosh, I wouldn't let them go too dang. far. You know, before like, you so, know, a couple blood. So this podcast breaks. is death proof. Coob, Bitcoin is the future, undisciplined, yeah. all the hats, blockchain, boop. Um, yeah, our sync. Yeah, the somebody, usual. I mean, some people I don't see on the boards, very like even very regular, they're still maintaining their hat, which is pretty awesome. Cool. What are you uh what are you doing this weekend? What am I doing? I don't think I have any it's like the first of the month, so I usually do a lot of business administration. Sure. Which kind of sucks. I hate the first of the month, but it does get the month started though. Well, other, I mean I mean I'm I'm like we're I'm procrastinating all this stuff at the last week of the month, like thinking about having to do this stuff, doom and glooming it. So yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Cause it, it me like for me, it switches from like the end of the month stress and then the beginning of the month relief. And then, it, and then it just like it goes back to stress again. Yeah. It's a, it's a cycle. Life's a cycle. Why do we do this? I don't know. It's too, it really, it, we should just get job. We should just get normal jobs, be normal people. We'll get a job at Bucky's. That's probably a great place to work. You could get you dude. Get they get free, paid really well. Free socks. They get paid way more than uh, most Bitcoiners. Yeah, I know. They, um, they might rule the world if Bitcoin doesn't. Yeah, they should start their own meme coin. Uh, we got the uh, some uh, comments from last week's show. It was our first live show. Um, Blockchain Book says, "Thanks for the hat. We missed you, Vake, or did we? Zap." Ooh. Ooh. And then the the open mic Toonster said, this show slaps 10,000 sat boost. Wow. Whoa. Those those some sats. I know. Then we had Vake. Vake again. Vake said, I had a dream that I met Carr at a beefsteak the other night. Turns out I got way too drunk. It was talking to a tree the whole time. Dude, he confused you with the tree. What does that say? I had that same dream, Vake. Weirdest thing. Wow. Does that mean you meet you met Vake at a beefsteak, or that's just? No, I'm just saying I had that same dream. Dreams are real, then. No, I'm saying like I had the dream that he just described is the same dream I had. You can. I had a dream that I met Vake at a beefsteak, and then turned out I was just talking to a tree. Dude, that's wild, right? That is wild. What kind of tree was it? Cedar. Hmm. Cedar is great. It's a great type yeah, of wood. It smokes really well too smokes and it, <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't rot in water did you say what you were doing this weekend already uh i know it's redwood that doesn't rot um cedar just smells nice uh what was i doing this weekend i'm probably you know the normal gonna work gonna try to sleep a little more than usual recover a little more how about you uh, i have a lot of work to do we got some announcements on tuesday i gotta get ready for we got coins reporter said hello i'm watching you hand waving Oh. Vake says, I wish I could have been in Nashville. It looks like an awesome time. So jealous of everyone who was there. Nice. Got Primly. Barbosa says, that's not an insurrection or rebellion. That not a civil war. Wait, see? He, he, see, I was right. That's not, wait, or maybe he means that is an insurrection. He no, says, he says, but, that's not an insurrection. So I was right. You were wrong. So what is it? I was right. What do you call it then? You don't call it that. It's just taking back uh, what's rightfully the citizens. Like that's the thing. I think that's the thing most the people coup? don't real. That's the thing that most people don't realize is like coup? the government works for the citizens. We don't work for the government. I'm not. I'm not. It's not. It's I'm a, not saying you're. But I'm the nomenclature. But I, but I'm not. saying most people don't recognize that. So you have every right as a citizen to go in and make the change. If they're shooting you, they're the terrorists. 
Uh, Vic says, I don't want to die. Good, Vic. Car says, car waits and sees and he stays in his lane. <laughs> Pretty much. I wait and see and I stay in my lane. Is he just happens to occupy all the lanes whenever he wants. Krebs says, Vic, have you got it's not met yet? I haven't met Car myself. You don't want to meet me. I'm nothing. Don't know why I somehow keep typing extra words. All right, now they're just saying zap him with the ad. Oh, here you go. he goes, it will be a civil war once the opposition is openly fighting the government. Oh, okay. So he's saying like once the people that are trying to remove start punching back. I think they then already it's a are. Civil war. I think they already oh, okay. are. They already are to some extent, not on full scale. It's not like they've really, uh, you know, formed an art, like an opposition army, but yeah. it's, it is very disorganized on a, I guess, relative to a normal civil war. I don't know, man. Like, yeah, just protect yourselves, protect your family, protect women, children, and um, pray for y'all. But like, it's, don't, don't take anything. Like that's, you know what I mean? Like you shouldn't take anything. As Except far your as, own freedom. No, but I'm saying like if if that's bullying, if they're sh shooting people, they're bullying you, and there's there's something there that's clearly wrong, and then you have every right to do that as a citizen. That's what I would say, and uh, that's not harsh talking. That's just the times that we live in. So it's just the times we live in, Coop. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, I don't know what times we live in, but uh, yeah, I hope. I hope they get their the right political leadership. Fired up after this tequila shot. I guess so. Um, Fired up. All right. Got to end this. I got to jump on a call. Stackers, give yourself a great weekend. If you're in Venezuela, be safe. And uh, report back on Stacker News. Get zaps. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're in America, think about uh, watering that grass that's in your backyard. You can change uh, the timeline. Keep up. Zap.